Hey everybody, real quick announcement before we start this video. I am going to be attending the YouTube convention Playlist Live in Orlando, Florida between February 6th and February 8th. So if you happen to be going to Playlist Live this year, please don't hesitate to come up and say hi to me. Here's a picture of what I look like because I know I don't really show my face much. The, the hat, the, the shoes, the face. Okay, here's an actual photo. <laughs> I hope to see some of you there and that's about all I got right now. Let's get on to the rest of the video. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Super Smash Brothers. Ready, set, go. Tokyo, Japan, 1998. Second party Nintendo game developers, HAL Laboratory, began to work on a 3D fighting game simply known as Dragon King The Fighting Game. Development for Dragon King originated on the Super Nintendo and was going to utilize the system's Super FX chip. However, development was eventually pushed onto the Nintendo 64 due to its improved 3D graphical prowess, analog control scheme, and its four-player compatibility. Unfortunately, the main mind behind Dragon King, Masahiro Sakurai, was not confident in the game's ability to sell as an original franchise. So, in an attempt to make his fighting game more unique, Sakurai wanted to include established Nintendo icons as playable fighters rather than using original characters. Knowing this idea could and would easily be shot down, Sakurai secretly created a prototype of his game in which Mario, Donkey Kong, Samus Aran, and Fox McCloud would beat each other senseless. After showing this prototype to Nintendo, Sakurai's idea was approved for Japan-only release and was eventually renamed Released for the N64 in Japan on January 21st, 1999, Super Smash Bros. featured a roster of 12 playable Nintendo mascots. These being Mario, Luigi, Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Link, Fox McCloud from Star Fox, Samus Aran from Metroid, Pikachu and Jigglypuff from Pokemon, F-Zero's Captain Falcon, Ness from Earthbound, and Masahiro Sakurai's own Kirby. Players would choose any one of these 12 fighters and duke it out in a variety of Nintendo-inspired stages. However, rather than using the standard health bar, Smash instead utilized a damage percentage meter. The higher a fighter's percentage was, the more vulnerable they were to damage, and the ultimate goal in the game was to get opponent's percentage high enough to send them flying off the screen. All of this mixed with the game's easily accessible controls and riotous multiplayer made Smash Brothers a massive success in Japan despite a severe lack of promotion. And its popularity persuaded Nintendo to release the game worldwide, where it became an even bigger hit, selling close to 3 million units in the US alone as of 2008. So Howl's little low-budget fighting game project had quickly become one of the biggest breakout games for the N64, and of course, any successful game is bound to get sequels, and Smash was no exception. Released for the Nintendo GameCube on December 3rd, 2001, Super Smash Brothers Melee was perhaps one of the smartest sequels of its time. HAL changed absolutely nothing about the Smash Brothers formula, but instead expanded, refined, and improved every single aspect of the game. The roster of playable characters more than doubled from 12 to 25, with newcomers including Princesses Peach and Zelda, Marth and Roy from Fire Emblem, the Ice Climbers, and Mr. Game & Watch, among others. On top of additions in characters, levels, collectibles, and items, Melee also introduced a myriad of new gameplay modes. Most notably, Adventure Mode, which introduced event matches and platforming stages to the Smash formula, and All-Star Mode, in which players had to survive through a series of battles with only one life and very few health pickups. And all of this doesn't even mention the unprecedented graphical prowess of the game, which was apparent from the moment you turned it on. Needless to say, Melee was an even greater success than its predecessor, scoring rave reviews, selling over 7 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling game on the GameCube, and solidifying Smash Brothers as its own flagship franchise for Nintendo. Despite its success with the company, Masahiro Sakurai left HAL Laboratory in 2003. Yet two years later, in 2005, Nintendo announced development on a third installment to the Smash Brothers series, and after a meeting with Nintendo's president, Sotoro Iwata, Sakurai agreed to direct the game that would eventually become Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Released for the Nintendo Wii on March 9th, 2008, Brawl expanded on the already gigantic Melee with 39 characters, 41 stages, and God only knows how many collectibles. In terms of the character roster, some of Brawl's newcomers included Diddy Kong, the Pokemon Trainer, Mother 3's Lucas, and the first ever non-Nintendo fighters, Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog, and Metal Gear's Solid Snake. But there were two things about Brawl that really made it stand out from its predecessors. The first was the Subspace Emissary, which built upon Melee's adventure mode by adding in an epic plotline and greatly increasing the number of levels to play through. The second and more controversial addition was the Smash Ball, appearing randomly during battles, the Smash Ball, when broken, would allow the fighter who broke it to pull off a devastating and visually mind-blowing attack or final smash against their opponents. And all this barely scratches the surface on the sheer amount of content available in Brawl. There were retro game demos, unlockable songs, useless stickers that nobody really cared about, online play, level creator, and so much more! Brawl was of course a huge hit, raking in nearly perfect scores from critics and selling 11.49 million copies worldwide as of March 2013. So at this point, after only three games, Super Smash Bros. had established itself as one of Nintendo's top-tier franchises, and fans across the globe only only wanted more. However, unlike many other fighting game franchises, Smash Brothers releases have remained scarce throughout the years. It wasn't until six years later in the fall of 2014 that the world was finally graced with not just one, but two brand new Smash Brothers games. One for the Nintendo 3DS released on October 3rd, 2014, and the other for the Wii U released on November 21st, 2014. Not only was this the first time Nintendo had ever released more than one Smash game at a time, it was also the first time Smash had ever been on a handheld system. New to the series this time around was Mii integration, character customization, and new fighters including Pac Man, the Duck Hunt Dog, the Wii Fit Trainer, the Animal Crossing Villagers, some Japanese characters I've never heard of, and Dun 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 Super Fighting Robots! Mega Man! 
The 3DS version boasted new modes like Smash Run, Street Smash, and a new take on the previous game's classic mode. And the Wii U version featured two new modes including Smash Tour and Special Orders, as well as the ability to battle with up to eight players at once. While the handheld Smash received generally positive reviews, the Wii version was met with critical acclaim and nearly perfect scores across the board. Since its release in the late 90s, Super Smash Bros. has gone on to become one of the most popular and best-selling fighting franchises of all time. But today in 2015, the series has become much more than just a gaming franchise. It's a massive staple in the competitive gaming scene. It's inspired a line of data storage figurines known as Amiibos, and more importantly, it's gone from a game that celebrated Nintendo traditions to a new Nintendo tradition in its own right. For some people, this series was their introduction to Nintendo's rich history, exposing them to more than just Mario and Pokemon, and from Duck Hunt and Ice Climbers and Little Mac to Olimar, Lucina, and Shulk? Who is this guy? I'm not really feeling it. Super Smash Bros. is a proud addition to Nintendo's ever-growing history. Thanks for watching, guys. DFTBA. Hey guys, thank you for watching my Smash Brothers brief history. I know I've been away for a while, but trust me, I have got a lot more planned for 2015. If you want to see more Smash Brothers videos, check out Smash History. It's a series created and run by my friend and co-host of this episode, Trailer Drake. And if you want to see more of me, you can check out this playlist full of every episode of a brief history I've ever done. Or you can go to my other channel, Foot of a Ferret 2, where I'm beginning a new Let's Play series on Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker for the Nintendo Wii U. It's a fun time and it's a nice little relaxer after the hyperness of a brief history, so I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. Thanks again so much for watching and I promise I will see you soon. All of this mixed with the game's easily accessible controls and riotous multiplayer made ma-